This podcast is part of the Michigan Sports and Entertainment Podcast Network. Go to michigansportsandentertainment.com for more great podcasts. Hey guys, welcome to the Faves of Our Lives. I'm Kelly and your other host is Brittany. Hey everyone. Today we have our friend Brittany D, who's returning as a guest. Hi. We're all science nerds, and today we're talking about Breaking Bad. Science, bitch. All right. Breaking Bad premiered January 20th, 2008. It ran for five seasons and 62 episodes. It starred Brian Cranston as Walter White, Aaron Paul as Jesse Pinkman, Anna Gunn as Skylar White, Dean Norris as Hank Schrader, and R.J. Mitt as Walt Jr., And the general plot is a high school chemistry teacher diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer turns to manufacturing and selling methamphetamine in order to secure his family's future. And after that, a bunch of other fucked up shit happens. (laughs) So the first episode that we're going to be talking about is Brittany D's favorite, Face Off, Season 4, Episode 13. And Brittany, do you want to talk a little bit about why this is your favorite before we dive into the episode um i really like the cat and mouse with gus and walt um gus is my favorite kind of antagonist in the series and um this whole episode is very uh dramatic like you it it's it's really action-packed and walt is trying to figure out how he can how he can figure this out and then of course the ending is uh is something (laughs) yeah it's explosive (laughs) That's funny. Uh, yeah, I, actually, full disclosure, I never really watched this show before we picked it for this podcast. So I was a little confused watching it, but I did thoroughly enjoy it because of the reasons that you said. Like, you immediately pick up on, okay, these are two enemies pitted against one another, and it's like a Harry Potter thing. I'm I'm, I'm blanking on the quote, help me out, Brittany. <laughs> What quote? What, one can't live while the other... Oh, yeah. It's like, uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I can't think the, of it either. I can't... It's something about one can't live while the other survives. Or only yeah. one... I'm not sure. Something like that. But yeah, same premise. Kelly, what did you like about the episode? I love the guy with the bell. His face. when <laughs> Yes! Because he's so pissed off, but, like, he can't do anything to express it except for make that face. Yeah, he's a pretty good actor considering he has zero lines. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that he won something for that I hope. role. I think he did. I also like Saul. I like any episode that has Saul in it, which I haven't watched Better Call Saul yet, but I will. I was going to mention that because in your Will and Grace episode, you guys were talking shit about spinoffs, and I, the whole time I was like, Better Call Saul is such <laughs> a good spinoff. It, like, it trashes that stereotype because it's so good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we don't have anything against them. They just usually don't do well. No, yeah. Yeah, we actually, in our Patreon episode, talked about uh, Law & Order SVU. That was a spinoff, and it did a lot better than the original it's true. It's still going, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> you guys are gonna laugh, but I watch Better Call Saul. And you don't watch Breaking Bad? But I have I not mean, seen Breaking Bad It's now. a prequel, so that's fine. You don't have oh, to know. Right. Yeah. It, it, and it may be the same as how Breaking Bad was, because from what I've heard, the beginning of the series was a little more comical, and then it got dark. Yeah. Yes. So... It It could be the same with Better Call Saul, but I enjoyed it more because I'm kind of weird with any kind of gore. That's why I stopped watching Breaking Bad, the whole bathtub scene of uh, it falling through the roof and they were trying to decompose a body in it. That was just... Yeah, there are some scenes in Breaking Bad I literally cannot watch. Like, the gore doesn't bother me, but, like, there's the one, Brittany, you won't know what I'm talking about, but... um, where Tuco beats that guy up and he's laying there, like, dying. I cannot watch that scene. And then when Jane is, like, choking to death and Walt just stands there and watches, I can't watch that either. Because it's so fucking real. Like, (sighs) chunks of human in a bathtub is not, like, something that you're likely to encounter. But, like, someone choking to death is something, like, that could really, like, is likely that you Mm -hmm. might encounter in your life. And I'm like, nope, too real. I'm out. That scene, like, 
tore me up, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah. It's talked about in the next episode. And actually, I saw a lot of those scenes because I'm a professional and I watched recaps of the entire series. So I did see those in like split second clips. So I know what you're talking about. But I did not watch the series. So listeners, please forgive me if I'm confused throughout this. Don't send her hate mail. That's true. Also, I'm very drunk, so <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so Face Off starts with Walt running through a parking garage trying to find a bomb that's attached to the bottom of a car. And he finds it, he throws it in what looks like a diaper bag or a purse. I'm not It's really definitely sure. a diaper bag. It's a, it's a, yeah, diaper, it's a bag. diaper bag. And he runs into the hospital and he could not look more suspicious. Right. I mean, he has some kind of gauze or something taped over his nose. He looks like a supervillain. Yeah. There is no way I would see him in the hospital. It's the whole see something. If you see something, say something. Yeah. I would definitely say something. And, like, not only he is acting really suspicious about it, the way he's carrying it, but it's a man with a diaper bag with no child. No baby, yeah. I mean, granted, he is on the pediatric floor of the hospital, so I guess the kid that belongs to the diaper bag could be in there, but it's really suspicious. So, he finds Jesse in a waiting room in the hospital, and he's asking him about uh, Brock, I think is the kid's name. This kid was poisoned, and we don't really know who did it at this point. People are assuming that it's Gus, at least Jesse thinks that it's Gus, so they're kind of talking about how to get rid of Gus. They have to get rid of him because, you know, he poisons children. So what is he going to do to them? And while they're having this discussion, these two detectives walk up and they ask Jesse to come with them. And Walt basically asks what it's about and they ask who he is and he basically says nobody. And so they take Jesse off with them to interrogate him and I just feel like these are two really bad detectives. Like I said, Walt looks like a supervillain. He's clutching a purse or diaper bag, literally, and they're just like, who are you? Oh, okay. Come with us, Jesse. Yeah, if they didn't know who he was, why'd they think he was suspicious? Yeah. I don't get that. I don't either. But they take him, they take Jesse into this interrogation room and they're asking him about Brock because apparently Jesse has said to Brock's mother that he needs checked for ricin poisoning and they find it highly suspicious that he would specifically say ricin poisoning when that's also what the doctor is suspecting and it's a rare toxin so they're thinking either he has something to do with it or he knows why this was done to this child so they're questioning him and he basically says this has turned into more of you know, they they started off acting like they were just asking him a few questions he wasn't under arrest and he was free to go but then they end up telling him that he can't go and so he asks for a lawyer and they kind of do this whole oh well you don't need a lawyer we're just talking and am i wrong or is that highly illegal i mean it is i'm not sure but i don't know that they wouldn't notes, do it <laughs> yeah in my notes i put i don't think the law applies on this show <laughs> Well, maybe. I just, like, we listen to a lot of true crime stuff, and I watch a lot of SVU and everything, and pretty much as soon as someone says the word lawyer, the, the interrogation is over until that lawyer gets there. Right, because they tell you, like, in your, I guess it's only if you're getting arrested, though, but they tell you as part of your Miranda rights, don't they, that you have the right to representation? Yeah, you have a, the right to an attorney. And if you can't afford it, one will be provided for you. Mm-hmm. But this was TV, so... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> After all of this, we see Walt breaking into Saul's offices. And he breaks <laughs> through the, the, the front plate glass door while I think it, her name is Francesca. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Francesca. Yeah. She is shredding papers when she hears a knock and she, I, she hears a, a bell, I think, and he just ends up crashing through the door so she comes out and he yells at her you know if you were here why didn't you answer the door okay but 
she opens the door a crack from the room she's in and sticks her pepper spray out. <laughs> like, okay, what if somebody on the other side of that door had a gun? Your pepper spray is not going to save you. But what else did she have? That's true. That's true. I mean... I guess it's better than nothing. Yeah, and this woman has such an attitude. She's with hilarious. Walter White. Yeah, I loved her. I don't know her, but I loved her. She he basically ruined her whole day. Yeah, cuz she wanted to go home and then she was going to have to wait for someone to come and repair the door. I totally get it. Yeah. And he was like, "Well, why don't I forget what he said, but when he saw her, he's like, oh, you're here. Why don't you answer the phone or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when she's complaining, he he's trying to get a hold of Saul is what he's doing. And I'm sure it's to help Jesse. Or at least I think it is. I don't know. Or he's trying to get information or he's trying to get him to help Jesse. I think he's get trying to get him to come to Jesse's aid. Okay. So... He notices that she's not just going to give it up. So he's like, you know what? I broke the door. I'm really sorry that I ruined your day. I have $1,700 right here in my wallet. I'll pay you that. It, it will more than cover the cost of the door. And you just tell me where Saul is. And she said, I don't know. A door like that, I'm thinking that's going to cost around $20,000. He kind of throws a fit a little bit. And he's like, why would the door cost $20,000? And I get that he's like frantic right now. But come on, you know what she's doing. The door does not yeah. cost $20,000. Yeah, and if you have $1,700 in your wallet, I'm sure you can get a hold of 20000 <laughs> Yeah. So because he cops an attitude with her, she raises it by $5,000. <laughs> I love that when he tries to get all, like, tough guy in her face, like, she doesn't give a shit. Yeah. She just stares oh, yeah. him down, like, I know you're not really tough. Yeah, and I also like that after he makes the deal, because he says, okay, that's fine, he's desperate enough that he's going to do that. He climbs back out through the broken glass panel. <laughs> so, this next part that I'm going to talk about is what really made me think, why do people like this character? I don't think they do. A lot of they people don't? don't? Yeah. He's, oh. like, very, like, quintessential anti-hero where you, like, hate him, but you still want him to win. Okay. See, that's how little I know about this show. I thought I people think... liked Walter White. Well... Here's the thing. In most <laughs> shows, like, the main character goes from somebody bad to evolving into a better person. Mm -hmm. I think it's the opposite for Walter. He starts out with good intentions of um, securing financial stability for his family. Mm -hmm. But then he evolves into a straight-up asshole. Because I think greed just gets the best of him. Okay. Now, see, I'm coming in at season four here, so that's towards the end. So that makes sense. But basically what ends up happening is he comes to his house. And I was con I was so confused through the whole beginning part of this. I was like, what is he doing? But he goes to his house and he calls a neighbor. And he basically says that he and his family are on their way to Santa Fe for a family vacation. And he thinks that his son might have left the burner on, on the stove. So he asks the woman to go over and check that the burner is turned off so that the house doesn't catch on fire. But what he's really doing is he's sending her in to see if Gus has some type of surveillance on his house. And I thought, this is so fucked up. You are sending this poor little old lady in there. She has no idea what is going on. And, like, he he risked her life. She could have been killed. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking he might be assuming that they wouldn't want to have to deal with another body. So they or would probably, an old woman. Yeah, they would probably bail, which they did, instead of, like, dealing with her once they realized it wasn't him. Well, and maybe, but, like, what if they would have been in the house, and they were just waiting for him? And they shot before they even realized. I honestly think he doesn't care about anybody but himself, so. That's well, true. That's I also it. had a note here. That, so in the episode previous to this, um, you see him making the bomb in his kitchen, and he leaves mm -hmm. the bomb shit everywhere, and I put a note, I was like, did he, is all that bomb making crap still everywhere, and he's sending this woman into his kitchen, 
And in the oh. next episode, towards the beginning of the episode, he rushes home and cleans up all his bomb making equipment. So that was still in the kitchen when he sent that woman there. There was like bomb, like wires and chemical packets and stuff everywhere. That's crazy. Yeah. Maybe that's a plot hole. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe. Or she's just like, wow, these people are messy. <laughs> yeah, she has no idea what it is. <laughs> she doesn't know much about bomb making shit, probably. Yeah. So after she leaves, Walt goes into the house and he climbs into the crawl space. And that's where he's keeping all of his money. And the men come in. He hears them come in. So he goes out through a vent to escape. Uh, Jesse is seeking the counsel of Saul. And he comes in and I kind of like this scene because just the way that Saul was with the detectives, I really liked that because, like I said, I don't have any respect for these guys. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, what did he say? He said something like, you guys are a bunch of dicks or something like that. Basically, yeah. Yeah, he asked Jesse, he said, what'd you tell them? And Jesse says, I told them they were dicks. (laughs) <laughs> and then Saul tells him to, like, get out and act like they have respect for the law. And, and Oh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, and so basically Saul can't help Jesse at this moment, but he gets information from Jesse to relate to Walt that can kind of help with the situation. And so Jesse tells Saul that Hector Salamanca, who is the guy that we were talking about, he, he can't talk, he's in a wheelchair, and he communicates through a bell and tells Saul that Gus visits this guy periodically in a nursing home and so Saul relays this information to Walt and he comes up or does he come up with it or does Saul say that uh this Hector guy killed someone close to Gus yeah Saul tells him that that Hector killed someone close to Gus so Gus like was okay. taunting him that he killed the rest of his family, not that they're, like, old friends. Right, right. Yeah. So, Walt has this idea that he's going to find a way to kind of lure Gus into visiting this guy. Because he doesn't visit him very much. It's like twice a year or something. And so, he can't wait that long for Gus to show up. So, he has to find a way to lure him to the nursing home. Walt shows up, and there's a history between Walt and Hector, and the guy kind of sneers at him a little bit, and Walter tells him, you know, I know that you hate me, but I know that you hate someone else more, and what I'm offering you right now is a chance for revenge. And so he starts to listen a little bit at that point. Hector calls in this nurse that he communicates through this board that has letters on it. And so he chooses a column, and then she goes through that, and he he dings the bell when she gets to the right letter. And what he has her spell out is need DEA. And she is so confused. And I don't quite understand because I feel like people know what the DEA is, don't they? Uh, I, I would so. think so. But I don't feel like it's an obscure thing. I feel like a lot of people know what the DEA is. Being a rose, though, I could see myself mm. being like, Dia, Dia. Right. But I feel like eventually I would get it. Or else, why didn't he just spell out a drug enforcement agency? That would have yeah, taken, taken so long. I <laughs> know, but what, I mean, like, once she didn't get it, he could have just spelled out the first word and she would have maybe put it together. I don't He's know. He's an old man. He probably would have dropped dead by then. But yeah, I do give her props because she has to be real patient for that. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he spells out need D-E-A, and the woman says, Honey, Dia isn't a word. And it just cracks me up because Dia is my mom's name. (laughs) Is that her real name? Yeah, that's her real name is Dia. That's funny. Well, it's not a word. It's not a word. It's not a word. You could not play it in Scrabble. It flashes over to uh, Hank's house, where they're all being kept, and I'm assuming from the recaps that I watched, they're under some type of protective order for some reason. Yeah, so Walt um, knows that... So he had a confrontation with Gus, and 
Gus was saying he was going to, like, kill his whole family, and so Walt had Saul call in an anonymous tip to the DA that the cartel was after Hank so that they would be under protective custody. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so they are all there, and Walt Jr. and Marie are mad at Walt because they don't think that he's taking the situation seriously, and I'm assuming it's because he's not there. Yeah, he won't. He refuses to come. He says he uses the excuse that he has to run the car wash, but really he has to kill Gus. I also have a note saying that I think that Walt Jr. is adorable. He is. Um, I actually met that actor. You did? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I was in college. So he, he travels around and gives talks because he actually does have um, cerebral palsy. And so he, like, travels around and does talks and answers questions about stuff, and he did, like, a meet and greet, and I have a photo with him. That's so cool. Maybe I'll send, I'll send that to you guys so you can post yeah, it. Yeah, post it. Yeah. yeah we will do. But he is really sweet, and he's, he's, he's very, like, a very genuinely nice person. He seemed like, at least. Yeah, I remember when me and Chad used to watch the show, like, Hardcore, um, we watched some interviews like on YouTube or something with that guy and he was really, he seemed really like um genuine. Mhm. We see all of them at Hank's house and someone comes in and basically tells Hank that this Hector guy wants to speak to the DEA. So he ends up leaving and going to meet with this guy. And when they're in the meeting, I really thought that he was going to say something. For some reason, I just thought that's he, he was going to turn in Gus. I thought that's why he went. But really, he spells out, suck my dick and fuck you. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. So what he ends up doing is he's just giving the appearance that he spoke to the DEA. Okay. The This henchman for Gus sees him being wheeled away. So he contacts Gus and he tells him, which is what prompts Gus to make this unplanned um, well, he, he that doesn't really prompt him. It prompts him to tell his employee or whatever to kind of scope out the nursing home and make sure that it's not some type of a trap, which it is, but you find that out later. So, the police end up letting Jesse go because the doctor rules out the rice and poisoning. And you see him leaving, and he calls Brock's mom to try to talk to her a little bit about the situation and get to the bottom of it, because he's genuinely worried about this kid. And as he's doing that, he's tasered and thrown into the back of a van by some of Gus's men. And I was like, oh my god, this is, like, broad daylight in the middle of the city. And nobody saw a thing? Nope. Can I just say that Aaron Paul's my favorite character on this show? <laughs> Jesse. Um, yeah. And I feel really bad for him because he just can't catch a break. Mm-mm. No, I've seen three episodes and I've caught on to that. And this wasn't even, like, his idea. Like, he was making meth, but, like, Walter sought him out just to use him to learn how to make meth. I mean, mm-hmm. like, obviously Walter could figure it out on his own because he's a chemistry teacher, but he needed him to kind of show him the ropes. And get yeah. contacts with who to sell to and stuff. So I just feel bad for Jesse because he didn't ask for any of this. No. Yeah, so we see Tyrus, I think is the henchman's name. He is walking through this guy's room in the nursing home. And he's making sure that nobody else is in there. And he basically calls Gus and he says, hey, I've checked the room. It's all clear. So Gus comes to the nursing home. And he he sits down with Hector, and he brings out this syringe. And he's basically telling him, I know that you spoke to the D. I don't know what you said, but I'm going to make sure that you don't say anything else. And basically, this is your last day. And he even says something to him, also, you're not going to look me in the eye. And for the longest time, Hector doesn't. But right before Gus injects this into him... He makes eye contact, and he does that sneer that we were talking about. Yeah. Crazy-ass face. Yeah. So he just starts ringing the bell. And at first, I think Gus is a little confused, and all of a sudden it hits him, and he screams, and the entire room 
blows up. So Walt has attached the bomb to the bottom of this guy's wheelchair, and the the bell is the detonator. And you you see the outside of the room. You, that's how you see it explode. So you're inside the nursing home, but outside of the room, the room explodes. The door blows out. You see Gus walk out and adjust his tie. And I was kind of like, really? Come on. But then the camera pans around, and you see that the entire other half of Gus's face is just gone. And there's just a big hole where his eye used to be. Yeah. That's and disgusting. The little, the little eye muscles are moving in there. If you look real close, his eye muscles switch. It's fucked up. Uh. <laughs> also, something I noticed, which I've seen this show so many times, and... I never noticed until I just watched this episode for the podcast that uh, um, as Gus is standing there, um, Hector's leg falls from the ceiling because like it had like blown up and stuck to the ceiling and then it falls oh, down ugh. on the ground. That's gross. So gross. <laughs> I put in my notes that this was like that guy that got axed in the head and then um, made his breakfast and everything before he died because oh, he was just... Yeah doing his regular thing so he just like walks to the door and adjusts his tie and then dies that's true so that part of his brain must have still been intact for a little while yeah after. at least for a few seconds right yeah uh so that was when i finally understood the name of the episode yeah oh yeah like the whole time i was like oh yeah they're facing off against each other <laughs> I think I think it's a little double entendre. Right, there. right. But we'll I also like that. the kind of um, it reminds me of like Two Face and like Batman. Oh yeah, and because like uh, Gus has that Two Face persona too because he's very like the way he hides that he's this kingpin is that he's like a real community man and he's like friends with the DEA and does like the fun run and all these different things and so he has this persona that he's. Like, this guy that stands up against this type of stuff when, in reality, he's the one perpetrating it. Yeah, that does sound very much like Harvey Dent, so I can see that. Yeah, I get that, too. It's really good, like, um, metaphor or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. What's the right word? Yeah, it's metaphor. It's a metaphor? Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's just good film making. Yeah, so Walt hears over the radio that there was an explosion and that three people have died. He knows that Hector was in the room, Tyrus was in the room, and Gus was in the room. So he puts two and two together and says, it's over. So he calls Skylar, who is at Hank's house still, and he talks to her and he basically says, it's over, our family is safe. And she asks if he had anything to do with it, and she basically just says, it's or he he basically just says it's over and so she knows that he had something to do with it so he goes and he talks to jesse on the top or on the roof of the hospital jesse informs walt that the kid's gonna make it which great news because i was really invested in this kid even though i've never even seen him never seen him on screen at least because i didn't watch the previous episodes and the doctor said that he swallowed some berries from a flower called Lily of the Valley. And it's poisonous, but they're sweet, so kids tend to eat them. And Walt seems really relieved that the kid's going to make it. And Jesse basically says, so it wasn't Gus. And he said, you don't know that. It, it was probably Gus. But the episode ends with the camera panning to a flower in... Walt's backyard that is the lily of the valley. So we find out that Walt is a real piece of shit. Poison. I like kid. how they, even though most people probably know that plant just by looking at it, they made sure to show the tag so there was no doubt right. that yeah. this is, in fact, lily of the valley. They actually, I think it was... I think it was in the episode prior to this, because I just watched, um, for the listeners that don't know this, I watched the entire series over again uh, in the past like week and a half. Uh, Overachiever. I'm extra. <laughs> but um, the episode prior to that, um, Walt 
after he had called and had everyone go to Hanks and everything for protection, he's sitting on his patio trying to figure out, like, what to do. And they actually show, you kind of notice it the second time around because you know what he's going to do. Um, but they show him look over at this plant. And then, like, the episode ends or something like that. Oh. And you're like, oh, shit, that's the plant. Yeah. Yeah, because I read somewhere that there was a lot of controversy. Well, I don't want to say controversy. There was a lot of debate before the episode aired about whether Walt actually poisoned this kid. So a lot of people were like, no, he wouldn't He, he wouldn't do that. That's a line he wouldn't cross. It had to have been Gus. And other people were like, no, Walt did it. And so I like what you said, Kelly. They didn't make it any kind of question. The man did it. Right. But this might be a dumb question, but why? What was the... What did he have to to, gain from that? It was to turn Jesse against Gus, because at this time, like, Jesse had been working with Gus because Walt pissed Gus off when he ran over those guys that had Mm -hmm. killed that kid. (laughs) And um, so that's why, like, Gus and Walt weren't working together anymore. And oh, and they killed Gail, too. I don't know. There was a whole lot. But um, Jesse had still been working with Gus, and Gus had kind of made Jesse his new cook. And, uh, Walt knew that Gus was going to kill him, and so he was trying to turn Jesse against Gus so that he could, like, get him on his side. So he would be okay with them killing Gus, because he says it wasn't Ryson, but Gus still had to go, right? And Walt was like, yeah, he had to go. Yeah, because Jesse's really conflicted about all this, because he's not a bad guy. Okay, Jesse is the only character in the show that has a conscience and actually cares about other people. Yes. I agree and with he's that. always getting screwed over for that. Love is weakness. Yeah. But it's better than being a straight up dick like Walter. Yeah. I don't believe that. That's just what people say. Love is weakness. Right. But it's funny because they kind of evolve in opposite directions. Like Jesse goes mm-hmm. from being like not a great student like making meth and all this stuff and like yeah he's still making meth and everything but he starts to like care about people whereas walter started out as a family guy and completely goes the opposite way so they're kind of evolving in opposite directions right yeah this was a really good episode though good choice Brittany. thanks The next episode was probably the most requested episode by our social media followers. And I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing it correctly. If I'm not, forgive me. But the episode title is Ozymandias. It's from season 5, episode 14. And this episode title is based on a poem written by Percy Shelley. And the poem is about the downfall of kings and how people in power will eventually lose that power. So it very much encompasses who Walter White is. And I actually have the poem in front of me, so I'm going to do my very best to read it to you guys. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand... Half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor, well those passions read, which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed. And on the pedestal, these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains, round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. So it really does explain what Walt is going through, and we get a little bit into that in this episode, because he, I feel like he literally loses everything in this episode. So that was a pretty ingenious uh, pick for a title name. Yeah, for sure. Even talks about the desert. Mm Mm-hmm. So, we're coming into this episode. I had to kind of go back a little bit to get some kind of information on this. But we're coming into the episode after a shootout has taken place. 
Gomez, who is Hank's partner. Am I right? Um, he was Hank's partner, but Hank's ASAC now, so Gomez actually works under Hank. But they were okay. par- they were partners for a long time. Okay. Yeah. He has been shot, and he is dead. Hank is wounded. He's been shot in the leg, but he's trying to get to Gomez's gun. And Jack walks up and points his gun at Hank's head. Walt is in the car, hears all of this going on, and so he, after being ducked down, kind of raises up and he's like, no, 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 don't do it. So he comes out and he's in the process of begging them not to kill Hank because apparently he does have at least half of a heart at this point. Yeah, I don't get that. Yeah. So he even goes so far as to offer them $80 million that he has buried out in the desert, which, that's a little dumb. You basically just told him where all of your money was. Yeah, I have this thing with this show where half the time I'm like, Walt, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely one of those moments where I'm like, Walt, stop. (laughs) Yeah, so Walt is trying to get Hank to just stop being so defiant because he is not saying any of the right things to Jack. Which we find out in about two seconds why. Because while Walt is telling Hank, please just you know, go along with what I'm saying. Hank says to Walt, what? You want me to beg? You're the smartest guy I ever met and you're too stupid to see. He made up his mind ten minutes ago. And that line, like, I'm not even attached to these characters and it kind of ripped my heart out a little bit. Yeah. Because this is a moment that this man knows his fate. Like, he knows he's going to die right here in this moment. I don't, I have, like, some mixed feelings about hate because he's kind of, like, one of those, like, manly man assholes. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not that much of an asshole. He deserves this, for sure. Like, this still, like, he does not deserve this. Especially towards the end of the series, like, because he has some issues at the beginning with, like, his masculinity. Like, he gets uh, shot, and he's a huge asshole because... He isn't recovering fast enough, and he's, like, really, really mean to Marie and stuff. And I'm like, dude. But he kind of, he has the kind of the opposite growth of Walt, where he kind of becomes more um, in touch with his emotions and, like, um, being uh, more there for his family members and stuff, whereas Walt goes the opposite way. Yeah, I can kind of see that. So kind of the same. Especially by the end, you're like, shit, no. Yeah. I also, (laughs) like, I respect his integrity as a police officer or a DEA agent because he's like, well, like, he's not going to let these guys get away with it. Like, he's going to go down doing what he believes is right. Right. Yeah. And so he basically says to Jack, do what you're going to, and then the gunshot. And you just see Walt's face, and there's a lot of anguish there. I mean, he, he wasn't pretending. He's genuinely, genuinely upset that they killed him they go off and they they dig up his barrels of money and he just doesn't care he just lays there on the desert ground in a ball crying this is the part that i didn't understand because he doesn't seem to care about anybody anymore so why is he so upset about this i think it's kind of like you have this dichotomy between walter white and heisenberg and Like, throughout the series, you kind of see, like, the Heisenberg come out more and more, and, like, most, more of the time, he's, he's this guy, versus, like, the kind man he used to be. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this is kind of one of the final moments that you see that inside, he, he does have part of this Walter White, but then, um, as I'm sure you'll get to, Brittany, one of the things he says next is real, real fucked up, Mm -hmm. and, like, the Heisenberg just comes right back out. Okay, I see. So, he's... Just, like, still showing his true self a little bit. I'm not sure it's his true self. (laughs) I actually think that Heisenberg is his true self. Okay. Yeah. And Walter is a facade? Like, the family guy? Well, it didn't... It Yeah, it didn't start out that way. But somewhere along the series, it flipped. And he becomes Heisenberg. This is a really complicated character. (laughs) (laughs) It is. Uh, Yeah, but that's what makes it genius. Yeah, that's true. But it just like tugs at my heart too much (laughs) Mm -hmm. especially this next part 
Yeah, so Walt is laying on the ground and he sees Jesse hiding under a car during all of this. And so they come back with the barrels of money. And also this Todd kid who, again, I never watched the show so I didn't know this. I kind of felt bad for this kid at first because I was like, he genuinely seems upset. He even tells Walt, sorry for your loss. No, he's a fucking sociopath. Fuck yeah. Todd. I hate Todd. <laughs> so I'm sitting here thinking, oh, this poor kid really doesn't have anything to do with it or didn't want anything to do with it. But then, as you'll hear in the random facts, like, he's arguably the worst character on the show. So, yeah, I'm with you. Fuck Todd. Um, so they find Jesse, and Jack is going to kill him right then. But Todd kind of tells him, hey, let's not do that. We can find out how much he told the DEA. And you find out later on they use him to cook. And so they're kind of separating them. They give Walt a Chrysler and one of the barrels of money, which is worth $11 million. And before they walk away with Jesse, Walt stops them. And he says, and I quote, I watched Jane die. I was there. And I watched her die. I watched her overdose and choke to death. I could have saved her, but I didn't. And then they take and him Jesse away. And Jesse just goes like noodle. Like he is so yeah. heartbroken over this. That That's so like I, I was saying earlier, like I skipped Jane's death and I skipped the beginning of the next episode too. Cause that's like, that's just like a nightmare scenario. Like waking up to your partner dead in bed next to you. Like that's so fucked yeah. up. And, like, Walt, Walt did that to him, inadvert- like, not directly, but, like, he could have saved her, like he said. Like, he didn't kill her, but he could have saved her. Right. And and then Walt acts like he still gives a shit about this kid and goes and chases him down when he's out doing drugs because he's upset about Jane. And, like, it's just, like, such an extra, like, smack in the face for him mm-hmm. to tell him this in this moment that, about Jane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I said that in my notes. Like, I hated this so much. And I hated it when Jane died. And then um, when Walter says this, it's like, Walter has a wife and kids and everything. And Jesse has no one. And every single person mm-hmm. he gets close to, it ends tragically. He just can't catch a break. It makes me so sad for him. So, Walt is trying to drive off with his 11 million dollars in a barrel in the back of his chrysler and he's in the middle of the desert the car breaks down good (laughs) (laughs) he he gets out and he finds out that the car has been shot and the gas line is leaking so he has to roll this barrel i can't even tell you how far like it seems like clear across the desert to find a house of this old man and he buys this truck to get back to town and i said i really like this truck i don't know why but i would buy that truck yeah we're back at the car wash marie walks in she wants to talk to to skylar and i guess walt jr goes by flynn now i think he like picked that name didn't he Brittany? yeah it was back I think it was in the first or second season that he wanted to start going by Flynn just because he's like a teenager and he's trying to like make his own identity and not be Walt Jr. Okay. Because I hear, I, I heard Walt say Walt Jr. in the, the last episode that we covered when I yeah. watched it. So does he just not respect that? Um, They kind of go back and forth. Like there's a part in the series where um Skylar and Walt are going, like she's trying to divorce him and stuff and uh, Walter Jr. doesn't understand because it's because cu- Skyler knows about the meth and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, Walter Jr. doesn't understand why. And he like she calls him Flint. He's like, my name is Walter Jr. You can't even say his name. And so then they kind of just call him both, and he doesn't okay. seem to care. Um, here's a fun fact: when I was a kid, I wanted my parents to call me Daisy. I think they did for a little bit. Not Rose. <laughs> no, Daisy. <laughs> Daisy's like a cow name. Probably, yeah. But (laughs) it was like, just like a free spirit flower thing. I mean, I was like, probably seven. I don't know. I don't know. I never had a nickname. Except for BB. Did you go by that before you met us? No. Oh. 
Good. I like inventing things. Yeah, so Marie walks in and she's talking to Walt Jr. slash Flynn about where his mom is. And so Skylar comes out, they go into the back room, and Marie just lays it all out on the table and says, look, uh, my husband just arrested your husband. He said he was going to. He had him in handcuffs. He's arrested, whatever. So you need to have this conversation with your son before a bunch of uniformed officers do, which I agree with. Uh, she also, she was very, very aggressive coming into it, so I didn't really expect this, but she also said, but you're my sister and I'm always here for you, and I thought, that's quite a woman to be able to put all of that stuff aside. Mm -hmm. And I also questioned if Marie and Skylar were, f were from Minnesota. Because during this scene, I felt like Marie had a hint of a Minnesotan accent. I actually noticed that, too, when she comes up to the register and she's talking to Walt Jr., like, she has this accent that, like, I never noticed before. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know about that. Does she say, nice pop? <laughs> she did not say that. I can't even remember what she said, but, yeah, I definitely was like, I've listened to enough wine and crime that I know the Minnesota yeah. accent. And this is it. Yeah, they crack me up with their accents. So they do end up telling Walt Jr. And he is really pissed. And he has every right to be. And so they decide that they're going to go home. And when they go home, they see Walt frantically packing. And he basically tells them, "Get go in the house, get your stuff, get anything important to you, load it up, we're leaving right now. And so Skylar's asking, what's going on? Where's Hank? He's kind of avoiding the question. And she just keeps asking, where is Hank? So she finally just says, you killed him. And he says, no, I didn't kill him. But he does admit that he's dead. So Walt Jr. kind of loses a little bit. And he's like, Uncle Hank's dead. And you can see Skylar, like, just... Every bit of energy she has just starts to drain from her body. And so he's like, we can't do this right now. You got to get your stuff. Skylar grabs a kitchen knife and she stands in front of her son and she says, get out. Which I think, you know, that's a great mom moment. She's protecting her kid. I completely forgot about the baby yeah. sitting in the living room. Like, it's great that you're protecting your teenage son. But he can fend for himself. Right, There's like, I know baby. that, I know that he has several palsy, but he's still, like, he's not incompetent. He can take care of himself. And it was just very confusing. It was easy for me to forget about the baby, because I didn't really know that she existed until this episode. Yeah, I could see that. Not watching the series, and then you're like, whose baby is this? Just like me on Who's Dawson's this? Creek. Who's this baby? Then... Walt kind of comes towards Skylar, and she just waves this knife around and cuts his hand, which she needs to learn how to stab people. Am I right, Kelly? Yes. Come talk to Kelly, Skylar. She's the expert. I've never, disclaimer, I've never actually stabbed anyone. <laughs> I just talk about it. What? <laughs> yeah. Our entire friendship is based on a lie. Sorry. <laughs> Walt gets mad, and he basically is yelling at them, what the fuck is wrong with you? We're a family. Yeah, I liked that part. <laughs> that just negates everything bad that he does. They're just supposed to be okay with it because they're a family. So, he ends up seeing the terror in their eyes, and instead of realizing what a fucking dick he is, and just being like, I'm sorry, and leaving like she asked him to do, he grabs the baby... And takes the baby. And Skylar is losing it. Chases him out, hitting the, the window of the truck, and he just speeds off, leaving her terrified. And this is, like, something that before I had a kid, I, it wouldn't have affected me as emotionally as it did, but it really bothered me. Yeah. I don't understand why she didn't hop in the back of the truck. That's what I oh, would have done. good point. <laughs> it has a bed. Yeah, just get up in there. Just... She's tall, too. Yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know. I was gonna say I would have ran after him, but 
I mean, obviously you can't run as fast as a truck, but I would have stole a car or something and followed him because, like, that's your baby. Yeah, I, I don't get it at all. This really, like, if poisoning a kid wasn't bad enough, this is just too much for me. And, like, doesn't he, like, he's just holding her while he's driving? Yeah, she... Oh, my God. Which really confuses me because there is a point where she looks and Holly is out of her carrier. And so he's holding her. But then you see him look in the truck at her at one point and she's sitting in a car seat. And when he leaves her at the fire station, spoiler alert, he does that later on. She's in a car seat. She's in a car seat. I think he goes and buys her one because there's a point... So, like, the next time you see Walt, he, he's, like, in a restroom with Holly changing her diaper. Mm-hmm. And he says, like, oh, the next thing we're going to do is get you a brand new car seat. No, oh, I totally So he gets her that. a car seat, and then after the phone call deal, he, he leaves her at the fire station. I don't know, but this kid broke my heart when he's holding her, and she just keeps saying, Mommy. Aww. Also... When he leaves her at the fire station, she looks terrified. Yeah, It just I mean, makes me wonder, what did they do to this little actress to make her so scared? I don't know. They probably gave her a sucker and then took it away. Oh, good point. She probably <laughs> I don't wasn't know. scared. She's just mad. <laughs> they probably gave her her blue cup instead of her red cup. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> After Des got his stitches, they gave him a popsicle, and he was so happy. That sounds good. I could go for a popsicle right now. So, we see Jesse again, finally. And he is bloody and at the bottom of a cage. And you see a ladder come down. (laughs) I know. You see a ladder come down. Todd climbs down. Jesse is terrified. Like, he scoots up as close as he can to a wall. He knows he can't go anywhere, but he's trying to get away. And Todd picks him up and takes him up the ladder, takes him into a building, and it looks a lot like the room where he was being forced to cook meth with Gus, and he hooks him to a cable, and he takes the handcuffs off of him, and so, obviously, they're gonna make him cook. And see, in the next scene, Walt, it's nighttime, he's part, he calls Skylar, the cops are at Skylar's, and... He basically tells her, shut up and listen. And this did kind of make me, I don't want to say like Walt, because it didn't make me like him, but it, he did something good. Because what he did was, he basically said to Skylar that it was him and him alone who did all of this stuff with the meth. And that even though she knew about it, that he forced her to stay quiet. And he also admits to killing Hank, even though he didn't. And she finally starts to catch on to what he's doing. So she starts to kind of agree with what he's saying, because he knows that the cops are there, even though Skylar said that they weren't. And he kind of threatens her, but it's a false threat. And he hangs up the phone. And that's when you see him look through the window at Holly, and he's sad, because he knows he's, he's saying goodbye to her. And he drops her off at the fire station. And he turns on the lights and the fire, uh, the firemen see him and they come running out and they find her in the front of the fire truck. So he did at least give the kid back. And the very last scene of this episode is Walt waiting for a van. Van pulls up, he throws all of his luggage in, he gets into the front seat and he drives away. And I did not watch the next episode, but is it Mike? No, Mike's dead at this point. Mike's dead? Okay. Yeah, um, it's, so, there was a previous episode that, um, Walt had thought, like, it was all over and they needed to run, and he went to Saul, and Saul said he had a guy that you, like, would pay, and he would, like, give you a new identity and take you somewhere, Mm -hmm. and, um, that's this guy, and I think they were actually, this was one of the episodes I had to skip to catch up today, but, um, that's why Jesse was so... Like, why, like, the rift between Walt and Jesse that's, like, culminating in this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, Jesse, like, they were going to run for whatever reason. And I think because, oh, Hank finds uh, a book that Gail had given Walt, and they know about Gail. Um, And so he kind of realizes that that Walt is this person. And um, 
so they're gonna like make the run for it and uh the with the ricin with brock um the reason that jesse thought it was ricin is because he had this uh cigarette with the little vial of ricin in it that he was supposed to be giving uh he's supposed to be poisoning gus with it and he couldn't find that cigarette after brock got poisoned and he one of the things that he realizes is that um saul's bodyguard huel had like patted jesse down and he was like oh huel took my cigarette then and whatever and but Walt ends up convincing Jesse, like, oh, it must have been Gus. Wasn't it in Roomba? That's what Walt... Walt made a fake one and put it in Roomba. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. But um, when they're going to to run, and this guy's going to give them new identities, Jesse is waiting by the side of the road, and he had had, um, like, a joint in with his cigarettes, and he realized that Huel had done the same thing again, had taken the joint, because this guy didn't want them bringing drugs and stuff. And so he realizes that, um, like, Walt was the one who had Huel take the cigarette with the rice in, and that Walt was the one that poisoned Brock. And so that is, like, what turned Jesse against Walt completely, because he realized, like, not only did he poison Brock, he did it to manipulate him. Mm. And so that's why they are fighting. In this and why, situation. Yeah, and so, like, Jesse ends up going to Hank and telling Hank the whole story, and then... Walt obviously gets pissed about that and then, like, puts the hit out on Jesse with these stupid Nazis and then this mess culminates. That's why the Nazis had come out to where Hank was because um, he thought Jesse was meeting him. He didn't know Hank was coming. And so he told the Nazis to come so he they could kill Jesse. But then it was Hank and Gomi, too. And so there's a shootout. Uh, I also had a note on this episode that... I thought was pretty cool. So they say at the beginning of the episode to Walt that a lot of people give general directions, but he gave a very specific direction. He gave coordinates to where this all was taking place. And he did this by hiding the coordinates on a lottery ticket. I found out that the coordinates on the lottery ticket, which are N34, 59, 20, W106, 36... 52 were actually the coordinates to Q Studios in Albuquerque, which is where the show was shot. That's really cool. Yeah. So it does actually, like, those are actual coordinates. Well, they're actually relevant to the show. <laughs> those are real numbers. Those are real <laughs> numbers, you we guys. We fact checked it. I told you I was drunk before we even started this. It's all right. At least you know <laughs> the states. <laughs> That's true. I knew that Albuquerque was a real place. Not just a made-up name. Uh, so, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say something that had nothing to do with this, so. <laughs> well, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say that I was pretty excited because my dad watches golf and Tiger Woods freaking won the Masters this weekend. I saw that. That's unreal. He hasn't won in mm -hmm. forever. Yeah, I saw a picture of him hugging his, his son. Yeah, his son's cute. Some guy is a millionaire now because he made a bet on him. Is it your dad? Nope. Shit. Too bad. It's not. Unless he just didn't tell me. <laughs> all right so we're going to dive into the random facts of this episode and all of my random facts this time came from ranker.com i typically try to mix them up and kind of put things into my own words but these were so good that i am taking it directly from ranker so i feel like i need to cite them <laughs> they're also one of our sponsors this week i'm just kidding <laughs> There you go lying again. It was a fact that I made up, <laughs> like you. Yeah, I do that a lot. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> so, Dean Norris made sure that Uncle Hank's homebrew beer, which is a German lager, by the way, became a real thing. Huh. Kelly, I knew you'd, I knew you'd want to know what type i know how you are about homebrewed beer oh i love every detail about homebrewed beer <laughs> i could listen to it all day, all day. especially if i didn't have a choice 
<laughs> uh, Showtime, TNT, and HBO all rejected Breaking Bad. FX began development for the pilot, but eventually passed. So AMC saved the series by picking oh, it yeah, up. I was going to say, what was it actually on? Because I just watched it on Netflix. Yeah. Um, Kelly, I know what you're going to say about this next one, but Jesse said bitch 54 times. Yeah, I'm going to say I would have thought it was more. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but it was only 62 episodes, so that's a high number. Yeah. So, Todd, who we spoke about. Fuck Todd. Said. It <laughs> that's what Brittany said. I didn't say that. I just no. repeated it. <laughs> it said that Todd committed the broadest range of crimes. So he broke bad more than anybody on the show. He committed murder, child murder, <gasps> which I'm not sure that it's not the same thing. It's worse. Well, I know it's worse, but isn't it the same? Probably. Like, crime. Anyway. Murder, child murder, robbing, association to murder, manufacturing <laughs> meth. Sorry. Distributing meth. Funny. Arson, breaking and entering, unlawful imprisonment, housing a meth lab, carrying illegal firearms, and obstruction of justice. It's a long list. Which one made you laugh, Kelly? association to murder like aren't we yeah. all associated to something <laughs> somehow it just seemed I'm, i've it just seemed vague i guess but i really don't think i've ever been associated with murder <laughs> to my knowledge unless have you stabbed someone no quit okay. trying to get the cops at my house <laughs> uh jesse pinkman was supposed to die by the end of season one. Thank God he didn't. Yeah. Uh, minds were changed by Paul's performance. He was instead made a second lead. I can't imagine the show without him. We say that every time we hear one of these facts, but for real. Okay, let me just tell you that he is... I'm whispering because Chad's right behind me. He's <laughs> like my only straight crush. <laughs> celebrity crush the gas mask that walt admires in his final seconds of the series is the same one from the pilot i thought that was pretty cool that is cool the supposedly remote desert sequences during the rv cooking sessions were actually filmed on the new mexico production facilities back lot so you don't have to go very far to find a remote quote unquote remote <laughs> scene for shooting in New Mexico, apparently. All of the meth on the show was actually rock candy. That's delicious. Yeah, and when they smoked it, they never inhaled. Just like Bill Clinton. Yep. So, it was like <laughs> actually rock candy in the pipe? Yes. Too? Not just yes. in... That's... I wonder if it really bubbles like that, then. I've never smoked meth. <laughs> I've also, <laughs> I've never smoked rock candy. Well, yeah, but candy definitely would, you know, because it right. caramelizes. Yeah. I mean, huh. you just have to eat it to get high. Candy. Off sugar. Off candy? Yeah. <laughs> you get a sugar rush? <laughs> candy is more addictive than cocaine. Is that true news? I don't know. It's <laughs> true news. Sugar is addictive. It is. That's true. Uh, it's like that scene from Family Guy with Cookie Monster making the cookie dough on the spoon. <laughs> I love Cookie Monster and Family Guy. Uh, Walter White's alias, Brittany, you will like this one. Walter White's alias Heisenberg is a tribute to Werner Heisenberg, who formulated the uncertainty principle. This principle states that it is impossible to determine simultaneously both the position and velocity of an electron or any other particle with any great degree of accuracy or certainty. Oh my god. Nerd alert. Nerd. Yeah. Uh, I knew that. Uh, <laughs> I should have figured. Uh, That's hilarious. And Hank Schrader's surname is also related to chemistry. The German scholar Gerard Schrader was the chemist who accidentally discovered the first nerve gas. 
I did not know that. So you got me there. Hmm. I mean, I already had a disclaimer in the intro that we were all science nerds, but some of us are more than others. More educated (laughs) than others, not more nerdy. Only twice during the series does Jesse refer to Walt by his name, instead going with the habitual Mr. White characteristic of a former student. That's funny. That's cute. Uh, This is going back to our Seinfeld episode, but several Breaking Bad cast members had roles on Jerry Seinfeld's sitcom. As stingy dentist Tom Waltley, Brian Cranston helped popularize the term re-gifting. Anna Gunn played Jerry's supposedly cheating girlfriend in one episode, and Bob Odenkirk played Elaine's sexually frustrated boyfriend. That's funny. I was also going to say earlier, but I think that I was getting another beverage. Um, Marie is on Life in Pieces. Oh. She's played by Betsy Brandt, and I really like her. Hmm. I know several of the actors were um, featured on the X-Files at different points, which Vince Gilligan uh, also directed. I think Brian Cranston, um, Aaron Paul... And I don't remember. I Oh, I think it's, it might have been Dean Norris. They were, like, on the X-Files at one point. That's cool. Vince Gilligan did weeds, too, didn't he? Her? No, he her. did not. He oh. did not do weeds. Um, he found out, he actually found out while doing Breaking Bad that weeds was, like, kind of similar. And was mad and, like, was, like, if he would have known about weeds, he never would have made Breaking Bad because they were similar. But they're really I, different, too. I really thought that there was a connection no, Gin- there. Gingy, Gingy Cohan, who does uh, Orange is the New Black, oh, is the one who created okay. Weeds. My bad. Sorry. I'll just... Yeah. I'll keep drinking. Don't worry. Give us ladies some credit. Hey, we work full-time. We all have children. Uh, we don't have time to fact-check everything that comes out of our mouth. <laughs> uh, the show had a body count of 269. <laughs> In 62 episodes. But this total includes 167 unnamed passengers killed during the plane crash in ABQ. Hey, um, have you guys ever watched Honest Trailers on YouTube? Yes. There's a really funny one for Breaking Bad. We'll have to post it to Twitter. I just thought of that because the plane crash episode, there's like a teddy bear eyeball or something falls in the pool Mm -hmm. it's like foreshadowing to the face off face off episode where he loses his eyeball yeah and in the honest trailer they're like foreshadowing (laughs) and they show that (laughs) that's pretty cool it's pretty funny too the like the youtube thing yeah excluding the plane crash being shot is the most common way for characters to die accounting for 56 of the 98 deliberate killings in the series. In the opening credits, the chemical formula for methamphetamine, C10H15N, and its molecular weight, 149.24, appear on the screen just before the title Breaking Bad comes up. Did I say that right? I am so drunk. (laughs) Uh, I'm glad it's not me this time. The 15 kind of looked like a 1S, and I was like, wait a second. (laughs) The last episode of Breaking Bad was dubbed Felina. Not just an anagram for finale, on its own, a cool nod. This is also the name of the song played in the episode that basically summarized the plot in its lyrics, though it was written decades before. That's crazy. Yeah. And the cleverness of this title doesn't stop there. It's also a chemical breakdown. F-E-L-I-N-A, which equals iron, lithium, and sodium, which equals blood, meth, and tears. I saw that in your notes, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, me too. The series ran for 62 episodes, and the 62nd element on the periodic table is samarium one of its isotopes samarium 153 
is used to treat various forms of cancer, including lung cancer, from which Walter White suffered. That's cool. On November 6, 2018, the Albuquerque Journal reported that a new film project titled Greenbrier is set to start production in Duke City starting midway through the month. While the New Mexico Film Office did not confirm this is a Breaking Bad project, a source told the local newspaper that this is part of the Vince Gilligan-created universe. And the plot summary kind of sounds like it might be a Jesse Pinkman-centered <gasps> movie. When is this? Uh, it just said that it was reported on November 6, 2018. Well, that sounds awesome. But it basically says, like, someone who has been kept captive for however long has escaped this imprisonment and is on the run. <gasps> so it's, it sounds a lot like... That sounds cool. Yeah, it says, according to the source, the film tracks the escape of a kidnapped man and his quest for freedom. Could this be Jesse Pinkman in a post-Walt world? I hope so. I hope it ends happily for him because that poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brittany, do you know how Todd dies? He does die. Did you know that? I know that he dies, but I cannot remember how. So Jesse totally, like, slave Leia's him. Like how when Leia kills, um... Oh yeah, uh, Jabba. With the chain. With the, that's exactly what Jesse does because they've got him chained up and they bring him in and he like he strangles Todd with his chains. Okay, awesome. so, so Aaron Paul is the voice of a character on BoJack Horseman, which is a Netflix original, and his name is Todd. Weird. We're gonna go off course here real quick before we go to social media comments. But did you guys see? The new Star Wars trailer? Yes, I did. And I heard them playing Leia's theme. Mm -hmm. And I lost my shit about it. And then I saw Carrie and I lost my shit about it. And that was the big parts to me. I didn't I didn't shit about the laugh at the end. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I like the title. I think the title is, like, unexpected. It doesn't sound like... I don't know, I guess just explicitly saying Skywalker just it was kind of jarring to me. Right. But I, but I don't dislike it. I think that's why I liked it. I, it was something that I wasn't really expecting. Yeah. Okay, you guys are going to have to, like, kidnap me and chain me up like Jesse and make me watch all these <laughs> because I'm sorry to say, but I don't watch, I haven't watched Star Wars. They're really good. Oh, I thought I was going to get murdered for saying that. No. You I didn't okay. watch them until college, so. Okay. Yeah. And you have to watch them in a specific order. I wouldn't watch them yeah, in the I order that they I were I don't released. know what order. That's another reason why I haven't ever yeah. watched them, because now it's like, there's so many, I don't even know what to do. We'll catch you up one day. Okay. Cool. I'm Midnight Agent Raw. And I'm Okami. We are the Super Media Bros Podcast. Each week, we give a comedically informative take on movies, music, television, video games, and much more. Put your shades on and listen to all episodes on SuperMediaBrosPodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Yeah, shades on. We're off. Do you want to go into the social media comments now, Kelly? Sure. This first part is our listener laughs, which they're not really super funny <laughs> this week. Well, it's because it it was a hard question theme. Yeah, it was a hard theme to kind of make funny, but it's because this show is just kind of dark. So do you want to tell them what the question was first for this week? Yes. The question was that if you had a day where there were no consequences to any of your actions, what would you do on that day? Okay. And TV Tangents said, I would just walk through people's houses looking through their stuff. That sums up the only mayhem I'm interested in. <laughs> Which, that could be pretty cool, though. Yeah. Who doesn't like snooping through people's stuff? 
And they like said, it. oh, and eat tons of Popeye's chicken. Hashtag old lady goals. That's not just old lady <laughs> goals. I think that's everybody goals. Yeah. MSE Podcast Network, which is our network. Yep. I mean, we didn't invent it, but we're part of it. <laughs> they said, since I'm but a humble podcast network, I require nothing for myself. Therefore, I would rob several banks and pay you beautiful podcasters everything you're worth. And we appreciate that. Yes. Mark Phillips said, I'm scared of heights, or as my son Cruz would say, hypes. <laughs> no consequences means I can't die, so I would bungee jump, skydive, fly a plane... Not much of a listener laugh, though. I would pick a fight with that jerk Tony down the street. I'm too afraid to fight. He's in a wheelchair, so I'm sure I can take him. <laughs> and then we had an anonymous entry that says, Honestly, if there were no consequences, I might kill my boss. He's an asshole, but that's <laughs> not really funny, and I probably wouldn't actually do it because he has a wife and kids, unless they would prefer it. Who knows? But aside from the seriousness of murder, I'd steal a tiger cub from the zoo. I would steal so many zoo animals, guys. <laughs> Rip all the tags off my mattresses and hide in the bushes from all the psychos like me who jump to murder as soon as they're told anything goes. <laughs> That's a good point, but Mark just said, or had a good point in his, that with no consequences means no death. No death. Right. So... We're all invincible. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so our next question was favorite episodes and moments. Drunk Netflix Reviews said, The best scene of the entire show takes place on a toilet. And that has a gif of Hank. That's when he finds the book, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Nick Emmel from Tennis Podcast said, Ozyman Diaz, the best hour of television I have ever watched. What Does It Matter podcast? Sorry, I had to remember what their acronym stood for. <laughs> Says, my favorite show. And then a gif of Walter White saying, you're goddamn right. For your reference podcast said, this is more of an unpopular opinion. I genuinely don't understand the hate Skylar gets. Taken from her perspective, her erratic behavior was understandable. I do agree their son was a dick, though. <laughs> and then, um, What Does It Matter podcast commented it and said, I agree about Skylar. Flynn slash Walt Jr. was just being a teenager. And I agree with that. But I do, too, but teenagers are dicks. They are. So they're really both right. So are toddlers. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, I agree about Skylar, too. A lot of people say, oh, Skylar's a bitch, Skylar's a bitch. Put yourself in her situation. Like, I don't like her personality very much. Like, I think she's kind of uptight. But, like, I don't think any of her reactions to anything are, like, I don't think she's overreacting. Right. But like, her husband just disappears and she doesn't know where the hell he is. And yeah. When we watched this, I was either pregnant or we were thinking about having kids and... Skylar was one of Chad's favorite names and I was like no this ruins the name for me because I thought she was a bitch <laughs> um, Abby Hazley says when Walter White throws the pizza on the roof and Leanna Peterson says when Hank finds the book in Walter's bathroom and realizes Walter is the man he's been hunting his face and then Garden State of Mind says can you help me with this too highly, too hygiely, uh, too hygiely. That's like a, that's like a Native American word. I think I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. Or Ozymandias heartbreaking. Okay, thank you for commenting, but I have no idea what that means. <laughs> well, that's the name <laughs> that's, of one of the episodes. Yeah, it's that. Oh. Before, yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Next time I'll do my research. Super Media Bros, which are our favorite bros, said, Cannot yep. wait for this episode. Arguably my favorite TV drama that ever happened. Behold. And then they posted a picture of their um, Breaking Bad collection. And it came in a miniature money, like, oil drum barrel. 
and they also posted some gifts that are really funny. Uh, one of Jesse dancing in an inflated suit, <laughs> and uh, one of this guy in money, like a lot of money. That's who that's is that Huel. guy? I'm sorry, I forgot it's his Huel. name. <laughs> I love Huel. Okay, Huel in a lot of money, and Walt and Jesse high fiving in the RV. Okay. Oh, most fucked up moment. There was a lot of fucked up moments. Mm-hmm. Massive late fee says, I think Walt accidentally killing Jane is probably the most methed up part. He did not accidentally kill him. Right. right. But you really need to work on that speech impediment. Oh, ha ha. No, it was a... <laughs> it, I know. It's a pun. <laughs> BD, how do you feel about that? I'm a little irritated. Okay. <laughs> Unless it was Mike Tyson, and then (laughs) right, but we yeah he didn't accidentally kill Jane. He let her die. Yeah, that was the most. That was one of my most fucked up. Yeah, that's that's more fucked up than I have accidentally three that I would have said not reading this, and they're all on here. So Hmm. that was one of them. Um, Laura says the guy's head on the tortoise. That's another one that I would have said. Um, MSE Podcast Network said, oh my god, I wish I lived near you. I totally want to talk about this and definitely the meth kid. What does it matter, podcast? I have to stop and think about that every time. (laughs) There are way too many to choose from. The first thing that comes to mind is Todd shooting the kid on the bike. And I'll just reiterate, fuck Todd. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Bethany says, so many to choose from. I'm going to go with when Walt makes Jesse kill his lab partner, Gail, the only person other than them who knew how to make the pure blue meth to save their lives from Gus. In real life, you're killing it with these show picks. Thank you. Yeah. But really, you guys picked them. That's true. You're going to die alone, says when Jesse sees his girlfriend get shot, and then there's a gift that says, how am I supposed to live? Cult Classic Mania said, season two or three, I think, where Walter takes revenge on the guys that killed Combo with his car and running them over, or when Gus kills that one dude with a box cutter. TV Tangent says, the kid with the meth parents who stole the ATM. That was one of my most fucked up moments that episode was rough and nick emil from the tennis podcast replied to that and said sent a gift that just says this is that it yep oh good that was a lot (laughs) yeah it was a lot we got a lot of response i think that was even more than friends yeah so we hope that you guys enjoyed this episode Brittany. thank you so much for coming back and talking about this especially since i was of no help (laughs) thanks for having me we will be back next time we're going to be talking about full house which is a big jump from breaking bad (laughs) yeah definitely although we will be talking about a little bit of scandal oh aunt becky yeah how rude how rude (laughs) So, yeah, stay tuned for Full House, which will probably be dropping in two weeks after you're listening to this. Uh, Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. To interact with us and have your responses read on the show, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at the Faves of our L1 and join us on Patreon for bonus content and special merchandise at patreon.com slash the Faves of our L1. That's the faves of our L and the number one. You can also email us at the faves of our lives at gmail.com. 